Well, hey, what's up guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Ed and today we are talking about how to increase your credit score using credit cards. That's right, how to increase your credit score using credit cards. Now you might think that's crazy, but listen, just stick around to the end of the video. I think this will help you, especially if you feel like you have low credit or you don't even know what your credit score is. I think today will be a helpful video for you. Listen, if you wouldn't mind, hit the like button below. That button will help push this video to more people that need this content. So if you find it helpful or if you're just expecting to find it helpful, hit the like button. I'd appreciate that so much. Also hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you'll be up to date on all upcoming videos. Let's go. So listen, your credit score, I feel like your credit score is like this big, scary monster that's like kind of hiding that the, the banks have this information about you and your entire financial life. And, and we're so frequently on the other side saying, oh my gosh, I wonder what is on that report. I wonder what they know about me. I wonder if I'm going to be able to get this car loan or get this mortgage, or am I going to get approved for this credit card? And the crazy part is your credit score isn't as scary as you think it is. And so I want to talk to you about how to access your credit score, how to find out what is it, how, what, to what degree should you be worried or uh, how far do you have to go or uh, just what is your credit score right now and how to improve that score using credit cards. So the very first thing I want to encourage you to do is get on creditkarma.com. Listen, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. This is just a fantastic website, uh, a great company. A lot of people believe that you shouldn't actually look up your credit score a lot that actually it's going to hurt you by finding out what your credit score is. That's kind of been a little bit of a, a myth in the credit industry, but I wanna dispel that rumor. Credit Karma is perfectly safe. It is what is called a soft pull on your credit score, and it does not harm you to use Credit Karma to look at your score. Now, and I'll talk about this a little later, a hard pull on your credit score will temporarily lower your credit score. So if you apply for a mortgage or apply for a loan or you know apply for a credit card, those lines of credit that you are applying for, yeah, they need to pull your credit history and that is considered a hard pull and it will temporarily lower your score, but you have the ability to get it back up pretty quickly after that. So we're just talking about a soft pull. I'm on Credit Karma right now logged into my account. Uh, you can see my, my scores right here. I'm happy to share them with you. 783 from TransUnion and 798 from Equifax. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with, with the state of my scores right now. And once you get into your account, you make the free Credit Karma account and you have this information, now you gotta begin to assess, okay, well, why is that my score? And why is it the way it is? Is it lower than I expected? Is it higher than I expected? And you can actually find out why are they evaluating your score the way they are. And again, I think this is one of the things that people are really scared about is how are they determining my credit score? There's a lot of myths out there such as looking at your score is going to hurt it. And that's, that's not actually the case. So if you get on Credit Karma, you can actually click into these scores. I'm just going to click right on, the, right on my TransUnion account. It's going to bring me to some credit coaching around this score. And it'll actually tell me what are the primary factors that are being taken into account to assess my credit. And so I want to go through those with you. And if you kind of scroll down, you can get to this point where you can see six major areas that are impacting my credit score. Okay, six major areas that are impacting mine and impacting your credit score. And I wanna kind of walk us through them so you know. And then I'll, at the end, kind of the opposite of, of looking at these, we'll say, okay, well, what do we need to do in order to improve our score? And so the very first one I wanna look at is your payment history, your payment history. I, I think this one might be a little obvious, but clearly, if you make your payments on time, that is going to have a positive impact on your credit score. If you are the type of person that misses payments a lot, that is going to have a negative impact on your credit score. And so you can see right here, <clears throat> it's saying that I have 100% payment history. Coincidentally, a, a, maybe a month ago, I did miss a payment on one of my cards. I thought I had auto pay set up on it. I did not. I missed a payment on it. It wasn't that much, but I missed a payment. I did get uh, a hit. I got an interest fee charged on uh, what I owed on that card. I was not happy about that. Uh, but 
I then went in, I, I paid it off full right, right away, like within a few days of when it was due. And I'm not even sure it got reported. I'm not even sure the bank was able to report it because I, I did it so quickly. So uh, it's actually showing up still at 100% for me, which I am uh, very thankful for. Listen, if you're the type of person that struggles to make payments, turn on auto pay. It's super easy, it's super simple. It'll make sure that you're always constantly making your payments on time. Now, uh, the thing about auto pay, the reason I can have it on confidently is because I know I'm not spending money that I don't have. So I already have a budget. I already know where my money is going before I spend it. I'm just putting those necessary purchases on my credit card. So whether they hit my uh, main checking account now or hit a debit card now or hit my credit card later, I know that money exists in my bank account because of my budget. We'll talk budget on another video. And so I have auto pay turned on on all of my uh, accounts. And so that makes sure I'm always making payments. When I sign up for a new card, one of my very first things I do is go in and turn on auto pay. So make sure that you are making payments on time. A second category that really goes hand in hand with this is derogatory marks. You can kind of see it over here. Uh, I have zero on my account. Uh, so you can see collections, tax liens, bankruptcies, civil judgments on your report. So anything negative that's on your public record, uh, any accounts or payments that are in a state of collection, those are gonna be really bad for your credit score. Uh, again, that might seem a little obvious, but if you're making your payments on time, hopefully you'll never get to that point. So. You wanna make sure you have no derogatory marks on your score. Number three, um, how many accounts do you have? I love this one, because I think this is one that a lot of people are confused about. And so if you look at mine, total accounts, uh, it says 28. I'm gonna actually click into the details here, and you can see on the screen that there's kind of four categories to look at as far as, uh, are you in kind of the red area, or maybe the, it's, you know, it's, it's re still red, but it's kind of a lighter red or in the green area of the amount of accounts you have open. And Credit Karma breaks it down into these four categories. Zero to five accounts, six to 10 accounts, 11 to 20 accounts, or 21 plus. And 21 plus is the highest, that's like excellent. So they're saying that if you want this category to have an excellent representation to the credit companies when they're pulling your credit report, you wanna have 21 plus accounts. That's crazy. I, I think a lot of times people think, well, the more accounts you have, that means the, the worse your credit's gonna be. And I think that's from a stereotype that typically we believe that if you have a lot of credit cards, you're probably bad with money. But that's not this channel. This channel is you, you, you're financially, you're fiscally responsible, you have a budget, you're not spending money you don't have, and so now we're just trying to maximize the perks that are coming out of, of using the right credit cards in the right places. And so for this situation, having more credit cards is a good thing. Having more lines of credit is a good thing. And so having a mortgage, having uh, an auto loan, again, making those payments on time, having more lines of credit credit cards is going to be a good thing for your account. And you don't get into the green zone according to Credit Karma until you hit 11 accounts. So you want to have a lot of lines of credit available to you. That is going to ultimately, as long as you're making those payments on time, is going to have a positive impact on your credit report. Fourth thing, I want to talk credit utilization. Credit utilization. Uh, they call it credit card use on Credit Karma. And so here's what this means. The more lines of credit you have available to you with all of those various credit cards or your loans or your mortgage or whatever, there's gonna be a certain amount of credit given to you to spend, right? So you might have a credit card and you might have a limit of $500, let's say, that is your credit limit. And so then let's say that you put a $250 purchase on that card. If you divide that out, 250 divided by 500, your credit utilization will be at 50%. Now, a, they want your credit utilization to be low. Banks want you to have a lot of credit, but they wanna see that you don't actually have to use it. So it's a little bit of paradox here, but they wanna see that you have a lot of credit, but you don't actually need to use all of that, or you're not using all of it 
frequently. Uh, to go back to the $500 limit example, if you only put $100 on that card, $100 divided by your, you know, your $500 limit, you're looking at a, a 10% usage. And so that would be better than having a 25% utilization rate. And so you can kind of look down at this and you can see 75 uh, percent plus is bad. And then you can see the different categories, 50 to 74, 30 to 49, 10 to 29, zero to 9%. percent uh, Under 10% credit utilization is like a great place to be. You can see right now uh, it's evaluating me at 1% credit utilized. It's because I have so many accounts and so many, so much credit available to my name, but I'm only using so much of it. So uh, that is going to give me a, a very high mark. Now, earlier I talked about having auto pay on. I know many, many YouTubers in the financial space and many other people that are good with credit cards that before their statement even comes in, when they make a payment on a credit card, they will go in and manually pay that off they'll pay off that expense on the credit card because they don't even want that purchase to hit their statement and then be declared to these credit industries regarding how much credit you're utilizing. That's kind of an ultra hack. Like if you want to pay off your purchases before your statement balance ever gets hit, that's like kind of a, a, another ultra hack to really just keep your, your credit utilization low of, of what's being reported to the credit companies. And yeah, your, your credit utilization is always gonna be way low um, if you do that. One key there would maybe leave like a dollar to hit your statement balance because you want the credit card companies, you know, seeing that you're using it, they wanna see that you're, you're at least spending something, something is hitting your balance. Cause they wanna know, they, they're hoping that you mess up. They're hoping that you don't pay it. They're hoping that you pay interest. So um, you might, if you're paying off early, maybe pay it off down to a dollar and let your statement end up being a dollar any given month. All right, next thing, we just hit credit card utilization. Next one I have is your age of your credit. The age of your credit. So this is the average age of your open accounts. The average age of your open accounts. If we click into the details there, you can kind of see the different categories of, of how healthy Credit Karma is regarding your credit age. Under two years is, is the worst. Two to four, you're still in the red zone. Five to six is the yellow zone. Seven, eight, nine plus years average age of your open accounts, that is where you want to be. Uh, I'm in the low category here because I have a lot of new accounts. Over the last few years, I've opened a lot of new credit cards. And so if you look at the average age of my accounts, yeah, I'm sitting about three years and one month. Um, the way to improve that is over time, keep lines of credit open. The best way to do that is through credit cards, which we'll get to that in a second. And the sixth thing is hard inquiries. So you heard me at the beginning that Credit Karma is a soft pull or a soft inquiry into your account that does not impact your credit score to look at your account through Credit Karma. But a hard inquiry is done by a bank or yeah, a lender of sorts who's going to give you a loan or give you a credit card that you applied for. And it wants to evaluate how many hard inquiries do you have on your report for the last two years. They, they fall off your report uh, usually after two years. Um, so these are how many hard inquiries you have in the last two years. And you can see I have five in the categories that Credit Karma uses, nine plus, five to eight, three to four, one to two, and zero. Um, having less hard inquiries is a really, really good thing for your credit, credit account. They're unavoidable if you're in the credit card game trying to maximize benefits. But yeah, having less hard inquiries is going to be a good thing. All right. Now that we know that about Credit Karma and what, that, what our score is and what are the primary factors that are going, being taken into account for our credit score, how can you use credit cards to increase your credit score? Well, let's just look at the positive way to maximize all six of these categories. Number one, use your cards less. Use your cards less. If you wanna get your credit card utilization low, use your cards less. Now. You might think that's a crazy thing to say from a credit card channel, but you wanna keep your credit utilization low. Now for me, I'm constantly 
putting every purchase on my credit card. And I think that's, that's what you want to hear. But if you are not totally into the whole credit card game and trying to maximize points, yeah, my advice to you might be to actually just use your cards less. Now, if you are in the credit card game and you do want lots of cards and you do want to maximize points, then yeah, use your cards, but maybe use that ultra hack where you pay off your purchases before they ever hit your statement balance so that those bank issuers are never even reporting how much you spent that any given month on your card. And so then your credit utilization rate is going to stay low. So pay off your things before they hit your statements or at, at the most, just have auto pay on, on your credit cards, pay it off. At this point, with the amount of cards I have open, I'm really running only a few cards at a time because I'm trying to hit a bonus or I'm, I'm using a specific category. So a lot of my cards I'm only using periodically just to kind of keep them active, keep them fresh. But for the most part, those cards are sitting at about $0 used the majority of the time. So that helps me keep my credit utilization low. Uh, second thing, pay, th pay your statements off on time. So we've been talking about this, turn on auto pay. If, if you are terrible at it, turn on auto pay. Uh, obviously you need to make sure that you're not spending money that you do not have, but as long as that is the case, you can safely have auto pay on, you know the money's gonna be there because you're budgeting your money ahead of time, you're only spending within your means, you're spending within your budget. Auto, auto pay just ensures it's gonna get paid off in time. Number three, take care of any derogatory uh, marks on your account. Now, to some degree, some of these things you might not be able to do anything. You might just have to let time uh, pass and have a lot of positive things on your report that will begin to outweigh those negative marks. But for instance, my wife, we found out when we first got married, she had a derogatory mark on her credit from a bank account that she believed she had fully closed. And this bank had, uh, had this account still open. And I don't remember all the details at this point, but... I feel like she didn't have enough money in the account and so she kept getting charged to have that account open, that checking account, but because there was no money in the account, it was just getting, she was getting kind of billed for it uh, and then they were reporting it to a credit agency for collection and she didn't even know about it. Like she fully thought she closed the account, her means of communication with them, whatever email she was using was kind of, she wasn't using that anymore. And so this was on her report and she just didn't know it. So we, we called up the bank, we paid off all the charge, we called the collection company, we paid off all the charges, we called the bank, we paid off everything. We, we talked to the right people to get that account closed and we just were able to stop it. Now we can't remove those former collection reports that were on our account, but now it's been years and years and years and years of positive things showing up on our account that that derogatory mark is no longer. So maybe you'll get on Credit Karma and you'll see you have a derogatory mark on there that you're not familiar with. So check it out, look it up. If there's anything you can do about it, take care of it, and then do the steps necessary not to have any more in the future. Number four, keep your accounts open. Keep your accounts open. I was talking to a friend the other day where she believed that it was uh, better to actually close an account. If you weren't using it, just close it. And so I would push back and say, well, we know that these credit companies are looking at your average age of your open accounts, and they're taking that into account for your credit score. And so if you have a credit card and it is no annual fee, it's not hurting you to keep it. And so just throw it in your sock drawer, right? Just, just put, it up, put it off to the side, put it in a safe somewhere that uh, you know it's not going to get used anywhere, it's not going to get stolen, it's not going to get lost and just kind of let it exist. Maybe pull it out once a year and use it for one purchase just so that bank knows that you still have it, it's still active, this card is still meaningful to you. But for the most part, you can just tuck it away. If you have a card with an annual fee and you get to a place where you're like, this, having this card with this annual fee is no longer a benefit to me, check to see if there's a downgrade path. Many, many card issuers and many, many cards have downgrade paths where you can downgrade them to maybe a different card by that issuer within potentially that family of cards. For example, the American Express Platinum, if you no longer want to pay that annual fee of $6.95, maybe you can downgrade it 
to the Amex Gold or the Amex Green, which are gonna have a lower annual fee and maybe have different categories that you can benefit from as well. Uh, or if you're in the Chase family and you got the Chase Sapphire, one of the Chase Sapphires, and you don't wanna pay those annual fees, you can downgrade them to really almost any other Chase card. You can get a Chase Freedom, Chase Freedom Unlimited. They have $0 annual fees. Then you got this card, you didn't close that credit line, you didn't close it. So that, according to the credit companies, that is still an open account. You're down to a no annual fee card, and again, throw it in the sock drawer if you do not want to use it. Uh, now, eventually there might be a case where you wanna close a card every now and again. And if you have loads of positive marks on your account, closing an account here or there, yeah, it, it's not gonna be the end of the world. Maybe your average score is gonna go down because you close that account, but you'll be able to build it back up. So I just wouldn't go canceling all your cards really quickly right away if you're not using them. Consider if they're not hurting you to keep open, throw them in that safe, throw them in that sock drawer, let them stay open uh, and let it help benefit your credit score. Uh, number four, be wise about how frequently you open accounts. Now, if you're in the credit card game, you're trying to maximize rewards, you're trying to maximize your travel and benefits and all the things, There, there's some risk that comes with the territory that we're gonna be opening new accounts a lot, right? A few cards a year, um, some people are crazy and do a few cards a month, okay? Uh, but be wise about how frequently you open accounts. I think there's just wisdom in that, especially when you get to a lot of cards, it's hard to organize, manage, all kinds of things. So just practice wisdom around that. And But conversely, my sixth point is add more accounts. Get more lines of credit. Uh, it's going to help you. If you can open a new account, you can keep that account open. It's going to help your average age. It's going to give you more credit available to you, but you're going to hopefully use less of it. So it's going to help your credit utilization. Um, there's so many things about just having that line open, having a new account open <clears throat> in ways that it can benefit your account. So yeah, Open a new account. Don't be afraid of the hard inquiry. Yes, it might lower your credit score a few points right at the beginning when you make that hard inquiry, but when you begin making those payments over time, when you begin not overburdening your credit limit in any way and you keep your utilization low and you just keep that account open over time, you're going to improve your credit score. And maybe you'll get that coveted 850 perfect score uh, one day. So hey, I hope this helped you. I hope this helped dispel some rumors and some scary myths about a credit score. So if you like this video, again, like it, subscribe, hit the bell notification. And if this was helpful to you and you think it'll be helpful to someone else, share it with somebody. I would love to get this information out to as many people as possible. Until next time, I'll see ya.